G'day, that safety guy here. This one is probably gonna ruffle a couple feathers. I might get some nasty comments on this, but let me read you something. The lovely province of Ontario. Ontario mandating naloxone kits in high-risk workplaces. The government of Ontario is, has, introduced, interne, uh, has introduced legislation to protect workers on the job and save lives. If passed, right, the uh, Work for Workers Act 2022, right, requires workplaces that are at high risk of a worker uh, and opioid overdose, opioid overdose, right, these work sites are supposed to have uh, naloxone kits. Approximately 2,500 people die from, op sorry, approximately 25 people have died from opioid related uh, causes between March 2020 and January 2021. Of these victims who were, uh, who were employed, 30% were construction workers. I'll let that sink in. So, naloxone, right? It uh, helps theoretically revive people uh, that are suffering an overdose from an opioid. In Ontario, uh, in Alberta, in BC, uh, it's been recommended by um, WSIB, by Workplace uh, Ontario, or uh, WorkSafe BC, WorkSafe Alberta, that we remove it's recommended that we remove aspirin out of first aid kits. As first aiders, we're not allowed to prescribe medication. We can't give you ibuprofen. We can't give you uh, ASA, acetylcholine acid. Um, we're not even supposed to inject you with an auto injector if you're having a allergic reaction going into. Um, there you're having an allergic reaction, an anaphylactic shock. So now they want to introduce a bill that makes it mandatory for naloxone to be on site. Which begs the question, if we can't have asthma, how can we have naloxone? Is the first aider going to get trained on using naloxone? Now there's an injection and there's a nasal, right? If you're dead, if you're not breathing, you can't use the nasal, therefore you have to inject it into them somehow. An overdose symptomizes, you know, not breathing, cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest symptomizes this cardiac arrest. Uh, allergic reactions symptomize cardiac arrest or respiratory, respiratory distress. Luckily, from what I understand, from some of the reading that I've done, the Loxone has no major ill effect um, if you inject it into somebody who's not overdosing. But this is asking another question. In Ontario, we have what's called fit for duty. If you're high because of recreational cannabis, potentially laced with an opioid or fentanyl or car fentanyl, if you are impaired by the medication that you're taking prescribed by a doctor, such as an opioid, because of an injury, are you in fact fit for duty? And if not, why are you at work? which would kind of negate the need for naloxone on a site. If you're smoking at work or popping pills at work, you're not fit for duty. Therefore, you can't really be there, at least not legally. And the other kicker is, as a first dater, as a site superintendent, as a constructor, as a supervisor, I'm not allowed to ask you if you're a recreational cannabis user. I'm not allowed to ask you if you are on pain medication. And I'm not allowed to ask you. I'm not even allowed to ask you if you have a food allergy and if you have an EpiPen. I'm confused. And I tell you what, as a first aider, as a trainer of first aiders, and as a former medic, there's people out there that are trained first aiders, sorry for the air quotes, I hate doing that, but that freeze when it comes to a simple cut. There's people out there, in fact, there's so many people out there that have refused to do CPR because of AIDS, hepatitis, and fentanyl that they actually changed the method to do CPR. They've actually gotten rid of the rescue breaths, right? Now it's 30 compressions because the act of the chest compressions will, will expel and be able to create a vacuum mechanically to get enough oxygen into the system so that doing CPR does that. If you look at how to use uh, um, um, 
naloxone, right? Call 911. If they stop breathing, do CPR. How is this gonna, how is this gonna help? Now they said that 30% of uh, the 2,500 people that died of an opioid overdose between 2020 and 2021 were in construction. How about the hundreds of thousands of people that die every day from using, or every year from using ladders wrong? They still allow ladders to be used. Now I realize that addiction is in fact an illness. In fact, I am a recovering alcoholic. I have an addiction. but it goes back to fit for duty. If you're high at work because you chose to smoke a doobie at lunch and it happened to be laced with fentanyl or car fentanyl and you go into OD, how am I supposed to know the difference? I can't ask you if you're a, a recreational cannabis user. I can't ask you if you're a medical cannabis user. I can't ask you if you have any special medical conditions or if you're on uh, medications that may alter your personality. So how am I supposed to know that you're overdosing? And on top of that, if I can't give you aspirin, how come I can give you naloxone? If I can't give you aspirin and I can't inject you with an auto injector, I have to put it in your hand and guide your hand to your thigh. Because actually, a um, couple months back, a worker was helping a worker who was going in anaphylactic shock, got out their um, EpiPen, inject went to go inject their co-worker had it backwards shot himself in the hand and gave himself a nice dose out of that EpiPen <laughs> raised his heart rate I don't know how this is gonna go I'm confused I'm I'm a I'm, I'm a little um I want to say disappointed but I'm 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 stunned at this whole bill, this legislation. Again, it comes back to fit for duty. If you're if you're not fit for duty, why are you at work? If you're high at work, why are you at work? And again, I can't ask you any of these questions to help me evaluate what I need to do next as a first aider. Because what we got to do as a first aider, if it's bad enough, we're going to call 911. If you're not breathing, I'm calling 911 and I'm going to start CPR. Who's gonna train these people on how to identify what in fact is an overdose of an opioid versus an overdose of another substance versus cardiac arrest, cardiac distress, respiratory distress? How are they gonna train these people? Firefighters, they have way more first aid. Paramedics, obviously, have way more first aid. Nurses, doctors, they have these tools, they have this skill. What is gonna make you a competent worker, a competent first aider, or a competent person to administer this drug? Competency, right, through skill, knowledge, and training, right? To tell the difference. In a crisis, in, in an emergency situation, the average person is gonna lose their mind and flip out, right? It's, there's very few of us that can uh, come onto a stressful situation like that and step back mentally, become mechanical, and deal with the situation. There's very few of us that can do that. So that's my question. What do you think? Is it a good idea to bring naloxone onto a job site? Is it a good idea to have um, a non-medical person administer this stuff? And who's gonna do the training, right? It's, it's a tragedy that we have this opioid crisis. It is, right? When it was crack, it was a problem. There was a war on drugs, it just put you in jail. If you have an addiction, yes, it's a mental um, disability. It's a, it, it's been justified as an actual mental illness. And speaking as a recovering alcoholic, I understand that. But again, it comes back to fit for duty. If you're high, why are you at work? Why are you getting high at work? Therefore, you are not fit for duty. That's my question. What do you think? Is it a good idea to bring this on the site? Do you think it's going to save lives? Or uh, is it not even going to get used? It's a heavy one today. It's a good one today. And again, I'm probably going to ruffle a lot of feathers just by bringing it up and asking that question. But I'm not known for pussyfooting. And I'm not known for being very politically correct. I'm also not, and I'm also known for asking the hard question.
So think about it, chew on it, be respectful in the comments, but what are your thoughts?